sister, Archbishop of Unanapanayam, Archbishop of Denver Crawl, Colorado, and the surrounding areas, Lika Tabert, Nirvana, Mangastu, the administrator of this beloved church, our brother priest, Mrs. Wan Wilson, Mrs. Masrasha, deacons, both here and from far away, Dhamarana Natru, Dhamarana Natru, Dhamarana Natru, how was your week? And how was your weekend? This should be better. The, the applause are, are evidence of the fruit of our labors. Um, that we worked hard this weekend to grow. On this day, we always commemorate St. Kirkos. In the Sinkasar, we commemorate the saints and fathers who were martyrs, who gave their lives for our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. In the Holy Scriptures, in the Bible, in the Old Testament, we remember the prophets who prophesied of the coming of our Lord. In the New Testament, we think of the apostles who spread the message of our Lord. Often, the ones who speak the loudest, the ones who say the most, they are remembered. Our beloved brother Deacon Ephraim just said that a miracle took place and we neglect to write it down. In this day and age, we like to see the things that are shiny. We like to see the things that are flashing, the things that look good, the things that stand out. These are the things we set our minds, our eyes, and our hearts towards. But the message of the Holy Gospel is not a message about people who were flashy. The message of the gospel is not a message about people who wanted to stand out. The gospel was about people who had been humbled. The gospel was about people who had looked deep within themselves and seen their own sin. The theme this year we took from the ascension of our Lord, not simply because we thought to celebrate this conference on ascension, but because every single one of us should let our hearts be lifted up to God. Each time the priest prays, lift up your hearts to God. He doesn't mean to become loud. He doesn't mean to become flashy. He means for us to become humble, to become quiet. St. Peter in 1 Peter chapter 3, speaks about this type of spirit, this type of Christian spirit. He says, let not yours be the outward adorning with braiding of hair, decorating of gold, and wearing of robes, but let it be the hidden person of the heart, the 
imperishable jewel of a gentle and quiet spirit. This is the evidence of our Christianity. A gentle and quiet spirit. But today most people are interested in the flashy. Maybe the sermon needs to be flashy for you to stay awake. Maybe that's why we sleep. Because we're so used to looking for things that stand out. And in doing so, we fail to see the things that are right in front of our faces. At the time of our father Adam, when he was created, God took from his side a rib and created Eve. In the introduction of the Tower of Mariam, it says that she was the mother of all living, not because she gave birth to man, but that Adam prophesied when he said she is the mother of all living. He prophesied saying that she would be the mother of who? Our Lady, the Holy Virgin Mary. That life would come forth from her. And that life that came forth from her was only truly alive because of its quiet and clean spirit. Because everyone else who had lived a life of their own and according to their own desires was dead. Death came to man when man sought after his own way. But Eve would give birth eventually to one. One who would have a quiet spirit, a pure spirit, one that was not built upon braided hair or wearing gold or what kind of clothes they wear, but one who understood the essence of what God wants from us, a quiet and kind spirit. This is what Our Lady, the Holy Virgin Mary had. In John's Gospel, chapter 20, verse 17, the Apostle St. John recalls that on the day of the crucifixion and resurrection of our Lord, on that weekend, early in the morning, Mary Magdalene, a woman who had been unclean, who had seven devils in her, went to the tomb because she had been healed by our Lord. She was no longer wearing jewelry. She was no longer braiding hair. She was no longer worried about what type of clothing she wore. She had become humbled by the presence of God in her life. And so the apostle, St. John, recalls that the very first person that our Lord spoke to was a woman who had a humble and quiet spirit. The difference between Our Lady, the Holy Virgin Mary, and St. Mary Magdalene is that Our Lady, the Holy Virgin Mary, she never had any of the sin that Mary Magdalene had. Although she was worthy to be called on that day to go to the apostles and give them the first message of the gospel, I ascend unto my father and your father, my God and your God. Although she was found worthy to share these words, she was different. She didn't have the purity of Our Lady Mary. 
but she is an example to us. Although we may not have the purity of Our Lady, the Holy Virgin Mary, when we repent, when we draw near to God, when we receive the sacraments of God, our lives can be made holy and we can be worthy to do the works of the apostles. Our church teaches about the purity of Our Lady, the Holy Virgin Mary, because she was in the mind of God. She was in the mind of God when Adam said, I will call her life, the mother of all living, Hewan. She was in the mind of God when our Lord, God and Savior, speaking to Eve said, I will put enmity between your seed and the seed of the devil. And your, so your child will step on his head and she will and he will conquer him through stepping on him stomping out Satan you know the fathers of the church say that there's one way you kill a snake you have to step on his head if you step on his tail he'll step right and bite you but if you step on his head, he will die. Our Lord God and Savior Jesus Christ was born of Our Lady, the Holy Virgin Mary, who was in the mind of God before time. God had plans for our salvation. He wanted us to know that he would come and save us. And so it says in the prophecy of Isaiah, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son. So many people came before that were virgins. So many people came after that were virgins, but they were different. They weren't like Our Lady, the Holy Virgin Mary, because our church teaches us, Mahasabish, Dingleness. Our church fathers teach us that she was not only virgin in body, but virgin in spirit, in mind. Twofold virginity. This is an example for all of us. She was in the mind of the prophets because God wanted us to know what we needed to become like. He wanted us to look and search for his desire. What kind of man do, do I want? Do I want one who's pure only in his flesh, but his mind is dirty? No. God desired one who purified the mind and the body. There was no one other than Our Lady, the Holy Virgin Mary, who did this. The teaching of our church fathers is that at the age of three, she entered into the temple and stayed there until the age of 15. At the age of 15 and a half, the angel Gabriel came to her in the sixth month of that year and said to her, Behold, you will conceive, and the child that is in your womb will be called the Most High God. Our Lady, the Holy Virgin Mary, she wasn't like Eve, who when Satan came in a hidden form, she didn't question. Our Lady, the Holy Virgin Mary, seeing an angel, in all of his glory, she stepped back and said, how can this be? Had Eve questioned like this, we wouldn't be in the sin that we have today. 
But Our Lady, the Holy Virgin Mary, was pure in her mind. And so she spoke up and said, I haven't known a man. And then the angel said, the power of the Most High God will overshadow you. <laughs> After this, the angel spoke unto her about her cousin Elizabeth. He said, if you can't see that this can happen, look at your cousin Elizabeth who is well in years and over the age of having children. She is now pregnant for six months, the one who was called barren. The church fathers teach us that the angel said this because God can do anything. And so our church fathers, they teach us that Our Lady, the Holy Virgin Mary, was in the mind of God and that she was pure like Adam before he ate from the tree. That her flesh was the flesh of Adam before there was sin. And that God made it possible for the barren women to give birth and he made it possible for Our Lady, the Holy Virgin Mary, to be of the flesh of Adam that was pure. We don't say that she was somehow cleansed after she was conceived. She was pure, always in the mind of God. The tool of God's salvation, the one who brought our Lord and Savior to us. Why is that purity important to us? Because that purity is an example for each and every one of us of how to please God. We think that we please God by hitting the cover of heart? Do we please God by singing a little bit louder? What does God truly get pleased from? St. Peter says, what pleases God more than anything else? What is precious in the sight of God is a gentle and quiet spirit. We should not fool ourselves thinking that our elaborate clothing and our elaborate ceremonies will get us into the kingdom of heaven. This is not so. This is not what our fathers taught us. They taught us to deny the world. When we come together as Christians in faith, we understand that we are not of this world. You are not of this world. You are in the world, but not in the world, but not on it. We are in the world, but not of it. And that is why evil comes towards us. Our Lord, when he went to speak to his apostles before his crucifixion, he said, I pray not that God takes you out of this world, but that he protects you from the evil that is in this world. That is why the angels protect us from car accidents. That is why the angels have been with us since the day that God blessed us. God protects us from the evil in this world because we are not of this world. We are simply in it. And so our clothing should not reflect the clothing of this world. These are some of the questions we have. Should I dress this way, cousins? Should I act that way? Should I walk with these friends? Should I talk with these friends? Should I wear these earrings? Should I wear this hair? Should I look like this or act like this or speak like that? You should speak like the ones who are in heaven. You should act like the ones who are in heaven because the kingdom of heaven is on earth in the form of the church. This is a heavenly place. So our brothers, the deacons, they say, shh, don't speak in the church. Our father said, Ahadu, we don't move because the angels are all around us. But yet our minds, 
They like flashy things. You know, sometimes our minds get attracted to things and we just leave the church in the middle of the dicing. Oh, I have something. I have to go downstairs. Every church I go to, the youth are somewhere else, doing something else, talking about something else, but not doing what's supposed to be done here. We are like the angels who understand the benefit of the praise of God. We stand before the throne of God. And his throne is a place where he chose to sit in the seat of the cross. When the bishop consecrates the body and blood of Christ, we are standing in front of the same throne that the angels stand in front of in heaven. And the angels stand in all attention. They don't move to the left or turn to the right. But they constantly hallow God saying, holy, 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 perfect Lord of hosts. Even the Kadasi says that. Kadus, Kadus, Kadus. We say it, but do we mean it? Are we saying it like the angels? Do we understand what we're saying? Do we understand what we're doing? When our Lord went to the top of the mountain with the apostles, he went to pray. Three of the apostles accompanied him. And he prayed for a long time. Just like you know, Kadase is long sometimes. And when he turned and looked, they were asleep. And he woke them. Just like we wake you in Kadase sometimes. And then he went back to pray. And they fell asleep again. And he woke them and said, the time has come, go and sleep. You can't carry this. And so our Lord is telling each and every one of us, if we can't stay awake in the simple things like prayer, how can we fight the devil? If we can't stay awake to pray, if we can't make ourselves move a little bit closer, be a little bit more attentive, be a little bit more like the angels, how will we fight the devil? And so our Lord fought the devil for us. He knew that we were weak. He knows that we think the opposite of what is true. Instead of being quiet, we become loud. Instead of being kind, we become inconsiderate. Instead of loving each other, we hate each other. Because the Bible teachers read a letter speaking about 27 years of hate in our church. No one talks about it. No one says that's what we did. But the angels in heaven know that's what we did. We have friends, brothers, sisters, mothers, and fathers that we didn't talk to because of what? Hate. We couldn't find enough love to heal ourselves. Thank God that he gave us this grace to be unified. Unity means love. We should not think the opposite of what God wants us to do. You know, those people who don't believe in Our Lady, the Holy Virgin Mary, as an intercessor, they always think the opposite. Sometimes you guys ask me, say, well, Cassis, what does this mean when, we, when it says here that our Lord, he said to St. Mary, woman, what will I have to do with you? People think the opposite all the time. The people who don't believe, I tell you guys, the people who don't believe, they're called non-believers. But we are what? Believers. So the believer doesn't see something in doubt. The believer sees something and asks God to reveal it to him. 
Well, we read from John's Gospel, chapter 3. Chapter 2, in the wedding of Cana of Galilee. It says that our Lord went to the wedding for the first time with all of his apostles. Twelve apostles lined up with him, and they first went public with his ministry at this wedding. At that time, Our Lady, the Holy Virgin Mary, came to him and said, They have a problem. There's no wine. And he said to her, What do I have to do with this woman? The non-believers, what do they say? Oh, you see, she was just a regular woman to him. He dismissed her. But what do we see? We see intercession. Because what happened after she spoke to him? He did what she requested. Only one who is pure is able to get God to do what is requested. Our Lady, the Holy Virgin Mary, went to our Lord and said they don't have any wine. And our Lord said, tell them to bring water. First he said, woman, what do I have to do with you? But then what did he do? He did what she said. We know that our lady, the Holy Virgin Mary, can get our Lord to do things that he doesn't want to do. He said, it's not my time to reveal my miracles. And then he did what she asked him to do, intercession. In all of the miracles of Our Lady, the Holy Virgin Mary, there are sinners left and right, Jews, Muslims, people who are non-believers. Our Lady, the Holy Virgin Mary, she asked God to forgive them. And then he does it. Her purity is what God desired. If we want to know why it is that God doesn't answer our prayers, it is because our requests are not pure. We ask for things that are only for ourselves instead of asking for things that are for God. We think about money and houses and cars. We ask for our own personal success, but we don't pray for the success of the church. How do I know this? Because before we leave the sanctuary, we are downstairs gossiping, making the church unsuccessful by our own words. If we care about the success of the church, then we speak of the church as the house of God. And we speak of the people as the children of God. And we know that the unity that is in this house is the unity of that which is in heaven. Our Lady, the Holy Virgin Mary, was not only in the mind of God, she is not only without sin, but she is the one who took action so that God would save us. She made her life different. She didn't try and live like the other virgins who were in the temple. The history of Our Lady, the Holy Virgin Mary, is that at the age of 15, she was supposed to leave the temple, just as the other virgins were. But she refused. And the priests, they didn't know what to do. They said, Mary is pure. We know this. She doesn't have the desires of other women. And so they placed her with St. Joseph for protection. They took the staffs of all of the elders of Israel and they prayed and fasted and the staff of Saint Joseph bore fruit. And so she is a light to all of us because she was willing to take the action of keeping herself pure in mind and in body. U-O-T-Y. We come together every year so that we can learn more about God. When is it that we will commit ourselves to this life? 
When is it going to happen when we have a conference and I say to you guys, oh, we have no one to tell about the curly curly hair from the boys. When is it that we'll have no more deacons and and uh, Mazemran, who are doing things that the priests are preaching to you about all the time, but you don't listen. When will that day come? Is it tomorrow? Next week? When exactly do you think the day will come? If you heard the gospel today, it said, no one knows the day. There will be two in the field. One will be taken, the other will not. What do you think? The one who is taken, who is he? The one who is not, who is he? The one who is taken is the one who has a clean understanding of God, a gentle and kind spirit, one willing to sacrifice everything for their God. Nothing in my appearance, nothing in my way, nothing in my, law, my looks. Just let me be a servant of God. This is what we should pray for. We should all strive for. We shouldn't close our eyes and dream about our futures so that we are living in fancy houses and driving big cars, but that we are righteous people like Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, that we are pure like Our Lady, the Holy Virgin Mary. You think God can't give you cars and houses? All he has to do is give you a blessing. But first, you have to receive the spirit of those who are blessed. St. Peter says, In God's sight, a very precious thing, a very precious jewel, is having a gentle and quiet spirit. Our Lady, the Holy Virgin Mary, is the epitome of this. When we hear about her and the prophets, she's like a symbol that is not clear. When we hear about her in the New Testament, we hear about her once or twice. She's hidden, not flashy, not living the life of the world, but she lived the life of God from the very beginning. This is what we should be doing. This is why we're trying to teach you when you're young, so that you can live your lives in a way that please God. May each and every one of us humble ourselves and not raise ourselves up. May we have the grace and purity that was given to Our Lady, the Holy Virgin Mary, throughout all of our lives. May God keep and protect us with his angels and archangels so that when evil comes near to us, it will flee. And may we live a life of quiet and peace with God until the day of judgment and the resurrection of the dead. May your hearts ascend into heaven. May you be with God always throughout all of your lives. And may God protect you and keep you and your families in safety and peace.